Welcome student. So we're going to talk about uh, a virtual private network with public and private subnets. The difference here in this exercise, it's going to be, we're going to build each component at a time. By the end of this exercise, you'll see how your data center connects to the cloud and how your clients connect to the cloud and interact with your application. As you see on the slide, currently what I have is the tenancy, one of the regions within the tenancy. We're gonna build this VCN, which is the virtual cloud network, and we are going to use two of the availability domain. This is your customer data center. So this is how we're gonna start. But before we get started, we need to look into some of the prerequisites. As we do not have an existing data center, we won't be able to actually create the the whole part of this exercise but we'll definitely go through the steps in creating the vpn plus in order for this to work in a real life situation is you would need to have your net on-site network administrator give you the ip address of the on-premise router so we can attach it to the vpn and the static routes for your on-prem network. So we are making an assumption you have those details and now we're going to start building the cloud in uh, OCI. So doing that, we'll start with the VPN. So it's simple, only difference here uh, when you create the VPN in the past, added the resources when we created the VPN, we generally add uh, more details like subnets, but uh, at this time, the option you would select is create virtual cloud network only. Then we can later on add components manually so we can walk through this whole process uh, once uh, this is created we will go ahead and create an internet gateway uh, so again we are going to create this in the same compartment where you created the virtual cloud network so everything is going to be in the same compartment uh, so we are going to keep this vcn in a single compartment then we are going to add two route tables the reason there are going to be two route tables is uh, one is for your private subnet the other one is going to be for your public subnet here so there would be two route tables you will as you see so there will be two one is the private subnet and the second one is going to be a public subnet route table so this is uh, going to be a uh, two public set subnets in two different availability domains so this route table basically will have the public route table will connect to the internet gateway here so that route table is for the internet gateway as the target so everything coming from outside the cloud the internet will hit the internet gateway and the second route table is the private subnet route table is for the private subnet which you'll see later on which is added here so basically this is going to be connecting your on-prem data so you're going to connect your on-prem from here and uh, cloud is com coming through the internet gateway uh, it will make more sense once you uh, once you see the whole slide completed things we have to keep in mind when we create the route table for the public route table which is here uh, we have to make sure the the cider destination block is 0.0.0.0/0 which means all that all non intra vcn so internal vcn non vcn traffic that is not already covered by other rules which are going to be rules which a part of the cloud network we just created will go to the target will go exactly to the internet gateway so the private subnet uh, route table we are going to target that for the uh, drg uh, so once we add that once we have the vpn ready we are going to update that step so for now uh, for private route tables uh, we are going to create the uh, route table for now, but update it like we remember uh, creating a VCN that VCN uh, by default created a security list and a route table. So we are going to modify those uh, default lists. So the modification is going to be we are going to add the existing rules, all the ingress rules to so currently they are they are saying 
allow all traffic into the VCN ingressor. So we are going to change that to change it to our customer data center source cider, which we would have collected earlier from our network engineer or network admin. Now, if we plan to use Windows machines to RDP into the VCN, then we need to add one more ingress rule, which would be uh, the RDP, which is uh, 3389 access. So we'll add that rule. Once that is done, we will go ahead and move on to the next step. We are going to create a security list for the public net, public subnets here. So we'll create a security list for that and we will have a private subnet. So we will create the private subnet a security list for each availability domain. We are going to have a public subnet and a private subnet. Public subnet is where your users, your customers are going to connect to. And through that, the public subnet, uh, your web servers are going to connect to the database to get the data. Same way, uh, there are two sets. One is for high redundancy. So for some reason, if you're, if you're this uh, AD goes down, the traffic from, from your customer will not see an outage, but they would be routed here. So that is the reason it's got a uh, HA built into it. So the first security list is for the public subnet. So the ingress rule to the public subnet what we are going to see say is the source cider which is the internet uh, 0, 0, 0, forward slash 0 and port 80 and port 443 we are going to have those two ingress rules where we are going to allow traffic from uh, outside so that is what the we are going to do but for egress rule so rules going out for the public subnet is going to be going to the sub, uh, private subnet. So that is the way the traffic coming in will be allowed here. The same query can be sent out to your database to get the data which your customers are looking for. Same way, you will have the egress rule. Now, only difference here is it is not going to be port 80 and 443. HTTP and HTTPS, but it is going to be a port meant for uh, Oracle database, which is 1521. Now again, this can be changed. 1521 is the default port uh, out of the box port, but that can be changed. After we do that, the 1521, we will have those egress rules. Uh, we are going to create a security list for our private subnet. So now we are going to create a security list for the private subnet. So what it means here, uh, you see all those arrows. So the private subnet, the ingress rule, so the the traffic coming in, pointing in in the green, is, is going to be coming from the public subnet one, public subnet two. Uh, it can uh, come from the private subnet. So basically it can talk to each other here. And the egress rule, basically the database will only communicate between to keep both this uh, database in sync. So they need to communicate. Uh, and that's why there will be an egress rule to go to either private sub. Now, same way you will have the, the public and private security list created on both the the service. So this is a redundant step, but needs to happen for redundant. So then we move down to adding a VPN to the network. So in order to add the VPN, so VPN is basically your connection from your data center to your cloud. So this is where we add the dynamic routing gateway. So first we will add the customer premise equipment. So we'll go through uh, the steps, how to get that added. Again, we do not have access to a data center, so it's just a, a formality. We are gonna do the steps, but we are not going to execute because it won't let us. So once that is done, we are gonna add the dynamic gateway 
and we are going to update the private subnet to make the dynamic gateway the target. After the dynamic gateway is created, we are going to, so after the dynamic gateway is created, we are going to attach it to the cloud network. This one would be attached to our virtual cloud network. We are going to update the private subnets route table to accommodate this new routing table. Update the private subnet route, route table. We are going to add that. We are going to edit that. Now, the final step is going to be the IPsec connection. So we need to connect the dynamic routing gateway, which was added in the cloud, to connect to the customer premise equipment, which we've created. And so this will complete the connection. So your data center can communicate to the cloud. Again, we'll go through the step. We won't be able to execute that with this last three items we are not going to be able to create but we'll know the steps how to create those so let's go to hands-on and see how it's all going to work out